Hello, I will be speaking to you today about the young educator and the failures of public education. As a young educator myself, someone new to their career, I have found that I am very restricted in what I am able to do, even though I feel as if I could have the biggest impact on a student's learning. September is an ideal time for salmon, and morning is the most ideal time to try. I started my school year a handful of the days, driving to the Sodas Point Pier, waking up at 345, starting my day for me with nothing in the way, not even other cars on the road. I enjoy and cherish those early mornings, casting from the pier, listening to the soundscape, focused, in the moment, keyed into what is going on around me. I would hear the salmon bust the water but not see them, trying to judge how far they were from me and where I should cast my spoon. By early October, your chances of hooking into a king decrease as salmon start their run up rivers. But I kept going. Seeing the sunrise, observing the wind speed and direction on my skin, counting down my lure to the depth where I can feel the bait fish brushing my line, trying to get it in the potential sight lines of an angry king, paying attention to the cadence of my retrieve, reeling at a consistent speed, giving the slightest twitches and pauses that may be the little extra that entices a following fish to strike. I was learning for myself before school even began. Last year, I was able to land my PB King. It happened earlier than those three pictures from this year. But I have been a lot busier this school year, especially at the start of it, with the grad school semester beginning and the changes to my life as an educator that have greatly impacted my day-to-day -day job responsibilities. This is how my school year began. It isn't like this is my classroom in early August. This is the day before students. This is the new room for me, and it was not ready to be a classroom the day before school. There was not enough desks, nor all of my things there. And the room wasn't even cleared out from the last teacher that was in there. Not only did it not have all the student desks, this was my workspace 21 hours before students arrived. My desk had yet to be moved. This year, I was moved to a smaller room given a grade level I've never taught before, bigger class sizes, and really no apparent reason why. What I had set up last year is now packed into the smaller room where I can do much less. I've found one way that works where I can maneuver around to physically get to each student's desk. Now that all my furniture is in, there's some sort of way that I can run things effectively, but very little room for error. It has taken me a while to figure everything out since I am moving so much stuff from a bigger room to this room. I brought pieces to me of me in this room, such as the Samoan flag from the two years that I taught overseas in Samoa, the many maps, posters of my favorite bands, and also the various things that we've made throughout the years at my time at that district. There's also a fishing leaderboard in the back that I made where students can bring in a picture of their fish on a measuring tape and if it is the biggest one or bigger than what is already up there they will get their name in the record books. This is one particular record from the class of 2019 that is still standing today. I hold the Chinook Salmon record by the way. The mornings I spent on the shores of some upstate New York body of water is where I learn most about the natural world, fully immersed in it. I've done my best here to make this the ideal learning environment for social studies. It's been frustrating because I feel like a running back in football must feel 
after driving forward and pushing through the obstacles that get in the way, gained 40 yards only to have a penalty push the line of scrimmage back 10, repeat first down. It is my fifth year here, but it feels like I am starting over. The priorities that we have in our public education system are flawed. Why is it that we still gather within four walls and comply with the decisions of others? Why is this still the go-to approach for public education instead of actively engaging in self-discovery, pursuing knowledge wherever curiosity is stirred? The mornings I fish before school were more valuable learning than the eight hours of the day I spent in a building supposedly designed for learning. My learning environment set me up for the observations and actions which were most beneficial to me, the things I wanted to do, the things I wanted to learn to be a better version of myself. A student's learning environment, however, is an environment that restricts self-discovery and crushes their desire to learn by squeezing it into such a small space. Those sunrises were all mornings I didn't catch a thing, but were mornings where extremely valuable learning took place. I listened to Peter Gray's free to learn on the roads there with no one or nothing to distract me. I learned so much because with no one around, I was able to tune into what I was doing and focused on what I wanted to learn. Listening to Gray's philosophies in the car on the way there, putting them into practice immediately after, made the school days that followed incredibly challenging. Going from the ultimate learning environment to my small classroom started crushing my spirit as I knew the hours before school were more beneficial to learning than anything I was able to do for my students inside my small room. I slowly realized that what my school and most schools do is restrict learning and self-discovery rather than encouraging and fostering it. Gray explains that what matters in today's educational world is performance that can be scored and compared across students, across schools, and even across nations to see who is better or worse. Knowledge that isn't part of the school curriculum, even deep knowledge, doesn't count. To me, this describes a lame version of an athletic competition. Are schools actually helping our students grow as individuals or just actively perpetuating the same system we're all stuck in? I think of public education as a Ferris wheel. We are rising and falling, thinking we are seeing and doing something new, but really just following the same loop, looking at the same things, just from slightly different perspectives. It doesn't allow you to go anywhere new and keeps you to what you can see from a distance. Education should be a car that you can take anywhere your heart desires. If what matters in today's educational world is performance, is being better or worse, I'd like to ask you this question. Who is the best out of these three individuals? LeBron James, arguably the greatest basketball player of all time, an incredible athlete performing at the highest level of his field since I was a sophomore in high school. He has made his living being incredibly good at scoring. He's the best, right? Or is it Neil deGrasse Tyson, an astrophysicist that has thoroughly examined science to such a level that he studies aspects of the cosmos that no one else has ever questioned. His discoveries are shared and compared across nations. Is he the best? Or is it this Mumbai street food cook, who is clearly the best at what he does? If his job is getting people food, I don't believe there is anyone who could do it quicker. So if we look at these three individuals, what exactly makes them better than one another? Is there anything at all, or are they all the best at what they do? 
If life isn't about being better than someone, why is that what we focus on in school? Why is it that we don't create a place where students can explore anything that interests them and become the best at whatever they wish to do? I had an incredibly frustrating morning last week and also afternoon today. It started by not being emailed about the honors breakfast that was happening first period. I became even more frustrated when I realized that 11 students left to go to the breakfast and seven stayed back. We used the class time to discuss our feelings and it allowed me to pick those seven students' brains about the situation at hand, seven of them being singled out for not being as good at achieving grades than the other 11. If more students are at the honors breakfast than not, what is really the point? Today, there was one student that stayed back for my middle school, ninth grade class, honors breakfast. I've really seen a digression of public education from my perspective. I've watched things go downhill and also experienced them. There's a lack of communication between staff, administration, students, and the community. It all gets in the way of student learning. The hierarchy of power in education is restricting a classroom educator's ability to empower their students. I'm not able to take student learning to where I want it to be. Administrators make, administrators make decisions without actually thinking of how they impact others or taking the big picture into consideration. Ira Shore explains that a common weakness of intellectuals who receive more education than is healthy for human beings is our trouble recognizing the obvious and doing the sensible. Now I have been observed four times by one particular administrator that has a doctorate but has never been a classroom teacher. Supposedly they know the best way to get through to my students in social studies with their doctorate and two years experience as a music teacher. Pretty sure teaching the tuba is very different from trying to guide 13 year olds through an examination of the causes of racial tensions and finding solutions to social unrest while sitting at their computers. Young ed educators today are very discouraged and bogged down with the bureaucracy and the responsibilities that it creates. These responsibilities that have little to do with how effective my instruction actually is. Things that take away from my time focusing on what the students need and what I can do best to bring that to them. All of these that are popping up in front of you here have little relevance to how a student learns. Of course, some of them do. Most of these are just in the way. They're trying to get students to not learn, in my opinion. And a lot of them are just extra fluff that makes things more difficult. My paper dives into more of my observations of the current state of public education. I remember going to set up my dad's classroom with him when I was seven, and ever since have been paying attention to the inner workings of public education. Overseas, in well-off districts, also in impoverished districts, as a teacher, as a substitute, as a teacher's assistant, I have been a student for many years at many different levels of school, and I've been paying attention to it all. I know this is what I'm meant to do in life, and I know so much about it from what I have experienced. But everyone's unwillingness to take my opinion into account makes me not want to do it anymore. I'm just trying to figure out what can be done to preserve the drive that many young educators are losing. There is a teacher shortage and no one is stopping to think about why less and less people are pursuing education as a career. I hope you found this thought provoking and beneficial to your own personal journey as an educator and thank you for listening.